so you've got a load of diamonds and you can't wait to spend them. They're burning a hole in your pocket. So, which troops and weapons should you buy this week? If any at all. We'll come to that in just a second, but first things first, what I always recommend is start of every week you pop to the shop and make sure you grab the weekly event troop. This one is Sathino. Athino? Is it a silent S? I do not know. But I'm going to go with Sathino or Sathano. Anyway, let's take a look at her. Well, first things first, can she be any more of an attention seeker? She's got her belly on full show. She's wearing a see-through top. She's got blue nail varnish, green or teal colored lipstick, those weird earrings, purple hair. The only thing she's missing is a sign on her head saying, look at me, please. But um, apart from that, let's uh, take a look at what she does. Creates a mix of three green and red gems for each green ally and enemy. So a good mana generator if you use an all green team. But the uh, thing about this is obviously where to get a bigger boost from it, you need the enemy to use um, green as well. Then if that spell goes wrong and you generate a load of green, which does give you any um, a lot of matches and hands it to the opposition they can get a load of green which obviously they need if you're taking full advantage of that so fairly incidental because obviously it makes red gems as well she doesn't use red so you're going to need some red allies on your team which obviously obviously use red and green at the same time so can be a very good mana generator but only in a very specific team but hey it's effectively free so we may as well grab this straight away the uh, traits are nothing fantastic at all. Yeah, nothing fantastic there. But hey, this is effectively free with your glory. So if you've got a bunch of glory left over, make sure you ascend this thing to Mythic because once you get this fully powered up and to level 20, you're going to have a, another troop which is on level 20, which is going to aid your power level kingdoms in the long run. And you get glory keys and some arcane light trait stones as well, which is um, super cool. Right, so um, what's my first impression of her? Uh, phew, well, I'm going to just say 5 out of 10 for now because it is probably good in the right situations, but I could be really wrong on this. There's, that sounds to me like there's a specific use for her in a way because it creates green and red. There's obviously a green and red troop or team combo somewhere which probably works really well for her, but... Um, I'm going to sit on the fence right now and just give her a 5 out of 10. Right, so let's take a look at what's in the Soul Forge this week. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Also, while you're here, remember to grab some Spoils of War if you have the glory left over. You can grab 10 of these a week, and they give you 10 event keys, 5,000 gold, 1,000 souls, and a bunch of treasure maps which you will probably never use. But hey-ho, one day there may be something in the Soul Forge which means we can use our excess treasure maps. We can only dream. Now onto the Soul Forge itself. I'll start with the weapons first, but I'm going to skip over the ones that are here all the time. No need to go over the ones that are here constantly, as they are in other Soul Forge videos. All right, first up is the Doomed Poignard. Deals uh, magic plus four damage to the last enemy, boosted by green gems. If they have a Doom, deal a double damage, and there's a 3% chance per tempering level to kill the enemy. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of these percentage chance to kill someone or a percentage chance to do something kind of weapons. Um, it can only end in disappointment because you expect it to work most of the time because that is the point of casting it. And when it doesn't, it's effectively almost a wasted turn. Of course, damage is OK. That is a guaranteed part of this spell. But um, the 3% chance tempering level to kill it is definitely not and this is limited as well to the fact that it's to the last enemy you can't even choose who you attack with this so very very situational and overall not particularly a, a big fan of this weapon at all these curse breaker weapons are reviewed in a previous video uh, as is uh, trick and treat and the others that are here all the time Celestial Flask is not here all the time, and this is actually a, a really fantastic weapon. Providing you don't use brown. If you rely on, on brown for your mana, then um, look elsewhere. But if you do use blue, green, red, yellow, or purple, then this is a fantastic weapon. Now, when you match potions, you get an absolute ton more mana than normal. And the effect is increased 
should you manage to mix two of these at the same time? Look, like, for example, if you actually manage to match a, a two blue potions together with another normal blue gem, you're going to create a ridiculous amount of mana for your team. That is, and that works on the other colours too. And the great thing about it is, you can cast it, obviously, first of all, and if it doesn't give you an auto-match, you gain an extra turn automatically. So you get a second chance to, to make it work. And that's really handy if you have an Exploder in your team as well, because you can cast them, like a Leprechaun or whatever, and there's a high chance you're going to then take out a load of those potions and gain an absolute ridiculous amount of mana. One of the best mana-generating weapons in the game. I absolutely love that. But uh, one thing to note, it does say like there where it says like Vital, Radiant, Curing, Blessed, all that stuff. That is only when you get this upgraded, so don't think that comes as standard. What comes as standard is what is in the spell. But yeah, fantastic weapon that. Mystic Manuscript. Explode 41 purple gems in my case. This is basically magic plus one. Then grant a random status effect to all Mystic allies, then summon a Mystic troop. So a, a mana generator, a state, status effect giver, and a summoner. I do like these weapons. I'm a, a fan of these. It's one of the kind of weapons I look for a lot when creating my teams. Um, pros and cons, whether you have these in first place or second place onwards. The advantage of having these kind of weapons in first place is you can um, gain the mana for them instantly if you are um, got other teams other allies, sorry, using the same mana colours so that it doesn't mana block this. You can get this charged up really fast and create a load of mana for the team. But the only downside to being in first place, of course, is if you get hit first by some unlucky skulls, you can die and then you lose the ability to have that summon. So, um, often better off in, in second place or another position in, in the team. But again, I really, really like these, these weapons. And like I said before, as this one says, lucky, enchanting, lightning powerful, etc. These are only upgrades. You don't get this sort of stuff as a standard. But this weapon is great because, again, you get enchanted as soon as you cast it. So you start getting ready to cast again absolutely immediately. Really, really good in um, many teams. Uh, these ones, that's here all the time. Trickster's Shot. A really good, really good weapon. Uh, eliminate all armor from an enemy and deal 36 damage, which is basically magic plus three. Gain two magic boosted by armor eliminated. So really, really good. A nice armor stripping weapon. Um, a very, very powerful. Uh, highly recommended in many, many situations. And again, one of the better weapons out there. Now these other ones are here all the time. And these ones are new. Shimmer Scales Wing. Looks like Shimmer Scales Cockroach, but never mind. Gives magic plus one life to all allies, and if Shimmer Scale is on the team, gain an extra turn. So basically half your team will be forced upon you if you get this weapon, because you want Shimmer Scale on your team to gain that extra turn in an ideal world. Otherwise, this is just a flat out life giver. No chance of an extra turn, no mana generation, no anything like that. But... um probably incidental and will work in certain situations but hardly essential and more collectible than anything staff of bright forest remove all green gems deal a magic plus five damage to an enemy boosted by the gems removed if the enemy is from a bright forest or if the battle is in bright forest deal a double damage so this is very similar to the dagger of azijin which is a good counter against the goblins this is obviously designed to battle some sort of team that's annoying from Bright Forest in a similar way that particularly uses, uses green because the gems are removed from with no effect. Basically, providing you're against a, a team that really likes green gems, this is a really good way to continuously mess up the way their team works. Fairy Ring. Deal magic plus 7 damage to an enemy boosted by fey allies. Then create a mix of 6 green and purple gems for each fey ally. So um, this uses yellow and blue, so has no chance of self-generating. So basically, you need the rest of your team to be using green or purple, and be fey ideally, to um, make the most of this, of this weapon. So, yeah, very, very situational. 
Um, probably good in certain situations. Obviously, it's there for a reason, but it is a very specific reason and only really usable in that kind of situation, to be honest. It's um, not the kind of weapon you're going to be using that often. Summer Aegis. Deal magic plus seven to an, to an enemy boosted by bright forest allies this time. So a similar kind of weapon, but um, just working in a slightly different way. Then create a mix of six green and red gems for each bright forest ally. So in the opposite sort of way, this uses a purple and yellow, but creates green and red. So the same rules apply as that last weapon. We need green and red allies in our team, or at least a couple of them at least, to make the most of that. And be from Bright Forest as well. So super, super situational, but certainly a very good for mana generation, given the right situation. Now let's take a look at the mythics. Is there anybody here worth spending your hard-earned diamonds on? I'm only going to look at the ones which are new, not the ones that are here all the time. First up is Flaming Oni. Uses red, green and brown. Is an absolutely superb troop. Summons three random goblins. Now if there's anything that's more annoying than goblins, in general, it's a goblin which summons even more of those things. But then this explodes magic plus one green gems so the more you evolve in the game the more your magic goes up the more green gems will keep exploding with this fella and gains an extra turn so this is a super useful troop in say third or fourth place typically fourth place imagine the scenario you've lost your first couple of troops maybe even the first three he's on his own gets to cast summons three random goblins that is guaranteed not one to three like a lot of troops are Boom, you've got a full roster of troops again, all goblins. Then, after that, explodes 38 green gems, which is going to have a high chance of filling them up with mana. Then gains an extra turn. Wow, this guy's superb, love it. As well as that, it can throw the normal way a goblin team works absolutely on its head. Goblin teams are typically associated with green, but because this uses red itself, and other goblins use red too, it summons a Firestorm at the start of battle, which is really good. Immune to Burning and Fairy Fire, and converts two Red Gems to Burning Gems when his turn begins. So, really, really good troop. Absolutely love a Flaming Oni. Next up on the troops that aren't here all the time is a Flame of Arnu. Uh, 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 deals magic plus four damage to the first two enemies, boosted by Burning and Fairy Fired enemies. So... We are restricted to attacking the first two enemies, like it or not, that is who you are going to attack. And the damage doesn't start off that good, but it can be boosted. If you have all the traits, the third one in particular is the most handy. Burn and fairy fire a random enemy when matching four or more gems. Fairy fire troops take 50% extra damage from spells. So you get this on the first two troops, and that's going to boost that damage by quite a bit, but still not enough to really justifying being in in many teams um not quite sure why it's 24 mana cost because the spell all around is not that fantastic and is hardly essential more collectible than anything and this anything comes out in the future which makes him work really really well queen of sin uh let's take a look at you oh, i don't know weird looking troop size of them horns how does she sleep at night quite literally Unless they detach, do they like unclick or something? I don't know. Anyway, deals magic plus eight true damage to the first two enemies, summon wrath or lust, then bless all daemon allies. So basically, you need a team of daemon allies to make her work properly. And the true damage is okay, but it's hardly breathtaking. And I don't care if you do have tassels on your bots, it's still hardly essential and not really worthy. Of mythic status, I don't think. Like, I would rather have Queen Beatrix on my team than this. That attacks everyone, does more true damage than that, and has a chance of an extra turn, and get half her mana back. And that's Queen Beatrix, that's a legendary. Yeah. I just don't understand some of these troops sometimes, on based on the mana cost and their mythic status, but they all must have a use somewhere, so... um she may be useful in some teams, but um, not a troop that I particularly use hardly ever, to be honest. Voice of Orpheus. Now, this is a good example of how a troop can get better over time 
without any of their spell changing at the same time. And uh, you may wonder how that's even possible, but I'll explain. Well, first of all, Voice of Orpheus has always been regarded a, as a weak mythic for a long time. Um, all the spell does is deal magic plus eight, it looks like, damage to an enemy boosted by all ally mana. Cleanse all allies, then give all other allies five mana, so not including himself. So it doesn't do much damage, and it's to a single enemy, and he has that cleanse. Um, so the spell isn't particularly fantastic, but what is fantastic is that cleanse all allies when matching Yellow Gem's third trait. Since Elementalist class came along, this guy just, excuse me, got a whole lot better. Um, all you got to do, if you're fighting an Elementalist class, and say it's Guild Wars and it's red, yellow or purple day, you can throw this guy in your team, usually in last slot, and those Elementalist entangles, burns, stuns, etc., can go crazy on the rest of your team, but you just collect yellow and everybody is cleansed. Simple as that. Better than that as well is the fact that, or not better than that, but equal to that maybe, is the fact that he is impervious. Immune to all status effects, devour, lycanthropy and mana burn means he's not affected by that usual elementalist stun, burn, freeze and entangle. So elementalist class literally on its own cannot stop him. He will be absolutely fine and can just collect yellow and cleanse everyone just by collecting yellow. Absolutely superb. And for me, that's put him higher up in the mythic tier rankings because there's not many natural counters to Elementalist class, but he is certainly one of them. Um, he can be stopped, though. If the enemy team has something that curses him, then that will put a stop to that impervious, and he can be uh, stunned or frozen, etc., in the same way as a normal troop after that but still a lot better than it used to be, simply because Elementalist class came along. All right, and I think that was the last one of the Mythics. I'll tell you who my Mythic pick of the week is straight after we take a quick look at these legendaries. Now, I don't normally recommend crafting legendaries. They do come along in chests more often than Mythics by an absolute mile. So just wait for these to come along and save your diamonds is what I suggest. Infernal King, though, let's take a quick look. I used to love this troop. In the early and middle game, I used to use this guy literally all the time. Converts green to skulls and a brown to red, and deals a decent amount of scatter damage. The traits are okay too, burn enemies when doing skull damage, and 25% chance to resurrect after death, the pick of the bunch. Really nice when that 25% um, chance to resurrect comes in. And yeah, I used to really like Infernal King. King Highforge. Popular in dwarf teams normally, but you don't see many dwarf teams around anymore. Stuns the last two enemies and deals damage to them, boosted by allied dwarves, and has a summon at the same time. So, pretty decent for that, but most people have him in a team in dwarf teams because it gives all dwarf allies a 50% start with mana at the same time. So, really, really handy. Leviathan dispels all enemies and deals damage to them, boosted by blue gems. Then knock the first enemy to last position. So this is quite a tactical the troop in a way. The Dispel is really useful. It just removes all positive status effects like Barrier, Enchanted, Enraged, etc. And then knocks the first enemy to last position. So definitely has its uses. But is uh, quite a tactical troop there. The last one is Holy St. Astra. Very popular in human teams because she gives all human allies a 50% start with mana. Then gives everyone life and armor. Then creates a light storm. And enchants all humans. So, um, good troop. Um, very, very powerful with um, all humans. And yeah, she's all around very good indeed. But who gets my mythic? Pick of the week. We got Queen of Sin. Can't go to you, even if you do have tassels on your what's it's. Flame of Anu, can't go to you, not enough damage, restricted to attacking the first two enemies. Yep, not good enough, sorry mate. So, and Voice of Orpheus, definitely improved since Elementalist class came along. That third trait is a very good natural counter to Elementalist class. But this is easy this week, this is going to go to um, Flaming Oni. Really, really cool troop. Summons three goblins, explodes a load of gems, gains an extra turn. That is fantastic. I really like Flaming Oni. Goes in many of my goblin teams. 
um, awesome troop. And if you have to burn some of your diamonds this week, I'll do it on Flaming Oni. He is very good. There are some good weapons as well, but if you want another mythic troop that you don't have, this one is certainly worth crafting. So um, there it is. There's my Soul Forge review. Uh, check back later because I'll be doing my team for the world event and showing what that is. And I'll catch you later. Most of all, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.